it is a bit boring. Launch control activated. Left here and I have to brake hard. Show you what this can do. Oh. Okay, so now I've done that, I can actually tell you that I don't like it. What's up everyone? Welcome to this POV review by AutotopNL. My name is Max and today we are driving this Porsche Cayenne Turbo, the new one, the 2018 model. And it is moonlight blue, so very dark blue. We have these Porsche exclusive design 21 inch wheels, the Porsche surface coated brakes. Uh, I will tell you some more about that later on. Um, of course, you have seen the video we made about the KNS already, so I don't have to tell you too much about the new KN in general. Uh, if you want to know more about the KN in general, click up here for the KNS review. So, of course, we've got the KN Turbo badge right there, and uh, the new rear light unit with the stripe across the rear. I really love the rear of this car, I think it looks really cool, very muscly, very beefy. Uh, quad exhaust pipe, of course, in that quintessential turbo shape. And it is, I think, the only SUV with, uh, with an adaptive spoiler on the rear, which is also pretty cool. What else? Uh, all the accents on the outside are black as well, so around the windows, the roof rails, the mirror caps. Yep and uh, the stuff in the front bumper as well. A lot of air ducts and stuff going on in there. Yeah, it is a very handsome car. It is longer, wider and lower than the previous KN. So that really gives it a more sporty look, I think. Very cool. All right, let's check out the inside. Um, this spec we have today, I really like the outside, um, but I don't really like the inside. It is a bit boring, all black leather. We do have these turbo seats with a turbo logo on there. Um, but other than that, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Leather, black leather and Alcantara on the roof lining and the pillars and stuff and a bit of carbon fiber as well. This car also has the sports chrono package, which means you get this little clock on the dash. And well, I think that's about it. And we have the key right here, which they also updated. It's much sleeker now, as you can see, pretty cool looking. So you think, well, okay, I'm going to put it in the ignition, but no, they still have this button right here, this switch. I don't like it. Choose either a key, which also blinks, by the way, pretty cool, or a button or something else, but not a key that's permanently stuck in there. Okay. Let's take it for a drive and we'll take it towards the Autobahn and then see what this thing can do. I hope we have enough light left but I think we'll be fine. The new Porsche Cayenne, always fun to drive. We have already driven the Cayenne S, as I said, but it's always fun to drive a new Porsche Turbo. So I've been kind of looking forward to this one because as you know, when the original Cayenne came out, all the Porsche purists really went crazy and, and said, well, this isn't what our brand stands for. This isn't what we want from a brand, from this brand in particular. But you know, since then, Porsche has sold so many KNs and people have sort of accepted the fact that SUVs can be sort of sporty as well now because all these brands are, are making them. And this KN Turbo has always had sort of a mythical status uh, in my mind. I always really loved it and it was just such a crazy V8 burbling car that you know, that, that's the reason why I always look forward to a new KN Turbo. Even though a lot of people may think, well, it's a ridiculous car. It is. Okay, um, what do we have under the bonnet? It's a four liter V8 by Turbo with the hot V. That delivers 550 horsepower in this car, 770 newton meters. So 
that is 30 horsepower up from the previous KN Turbo and it's only 20 less than the previous KN Turbo S. So that's not bad at all. And that also means that the KN Turbo S of this generation is probably going to get around 600 horsepower, which is uh, nice. So it's linked to a ZF 8-speed gearbox and it is a fantastic gearbox. I will show you the launch control right now. We'll go to Sport Plus. That's it. Just go to Sport Plus, foot hard on the brake, full throttle, launch control activated. And there we go. Oh, and it jerks forward when it shifts. We even got some wheel spin on a couple of runs from first to second gear. Um, and that just shows you how aggressive Porsche have calibrated this ZF 8-speed gearbox because there are a lot of brands that use this gearbox but it's not as aggressive as uh, this one in this car. Of course the Panamera Turbo has a similar setup but that one has a PDK gearbox uh, but they went for a, an automatic gearbox because this car also has to go off-road. As you can see we've got all these off-road modes and it also has to be able to tow a trailer so this can still tow three and a half tons that's kind of necessary with uh, with an suv like this so those are the reasons they went for this gearbox but don't worry you're not going to miss a double clutch because it is really really good and the fact that this is such a good and aggressive gearbox is confirmed by the performance figures because this car uh, with the sports chrono pack and launch control goes from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.9 seconds. This car weighs 2.2 tons nearly, 3.9 seconds, that's insane. Top speed is 286 kilometers an hour, so we're going to test that out in a minute. This car is on the same platform as the Audi SQ7, the Bentley Bentayga and the Lamborghini Urus. Um, only this is compared to the SQ7 and the Bentayga shorter wheelbase version. It's the MLB platform which has a hybrid construction of steel and aluminium also to save weight because all the KNs, all the models are 60 kilos lighter than their predecessors. Um, but the fact that it shares so much with those Audi and Bentley siblings uh, also means that it has the 48 volt system that powers the active anti-roll bars. And this car is equipped with a lot of features to make sure that you don't feel the weight. Let me just get rid of that traction control. And well, show you what this can do. Oh, it is so aggressive. And as I said, it has a lot of stuff to make sure that this car corners as flat as possible, like that active anti-roll bar system but also the turbo gets PASM air suspension as standard it also has a limited slip differential at the rear it also has a multi-plate clutch to distribute the power from front to back front axle rear axle and it has Porsche torque factoring uh, on the rear axle as well it also has four-wheel steering I mean the list goes on and on and the abbreviations go on and on as well so we've got PDCC PASM PTV and we also have PSCB, which are the Porsche silicon coated brakes. I told you about them already. Um, it is a sort of a middle ground between a regular steel brake and the PCCB, there we go again, carbon ceramic brakes. So it has a silicon carbide coating that has to make sure that fading uh, stays away as long as possible. So you keep your braking power. Oh, sounds good as well. It has a valve control exhaust. So Sport Plus means exhaust valves are open. But all those technological gimmicks, features make sure that this car can do stuff. I mean, you wouldn't have imagined an SUV of 2.2 tons could do this and would feel this good doing it. I mean, it just blows my mind. So the air suspension has six different ride heights and we are in the lowest 
one right now. So we're going to go on the Autobahn here and we'll see what happens when you really put it through its paces. I mean, on these roads, it is ridiculously quick. So I'm guessing on the Autobahn, it won't be any different. Here we go. So that rear, that active rear spoiler now lowers and makes sure that we get as little drag as possible. But if someone, for instance, goes left here and I have to brake hard, it also acts as an air brake. Can't really see how fast I'm going right now, 285 I think, so didn't take very long. I'm kind of missing a head-up display right now, but 293. So this is very impressive, already past the top speed given by Porsche. That's 299, 300 kilometers an hour in the KN. Man, and it's really stable as well. 31, 32, nothing to see here. 33, just a 2.2 ton SUV going 304 kilometers an hour. You do need some some space, but my god, I think that's it. 304 kilometers an hour. Man. Okay, so now I've done that, I can actually tell you that we did an autobahn run earlier and got to 307 kilometers an hour. I mean mind blown 307 kilometers an hour in a KN that is super impressive and still 304 not bad very much very impressive from this insane car but one sort of negative to those PSCB brakes uh, those coated brakes is that when we did that autobahn run that high-speed run after the brakes were gone I've said it before I will say it again if you get a car that's this heavy and has this much power and goes this fast always go for carbon ceramic brakes I know they cost an arm and a leg but they are really really worth it they are they are almost a necessity on a car this fast and this heavy so keep that in mind and well that also means that we've gotten to the end of this POV review I hope you enjoyed it you can subscribe by clicking the big button right here you can also check out this POV review of the Macan Turbo with performance package and you can check out this playlist we've made a lot of these so if you're in for a treat go check it out thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one bye guys